right, so today, I'm going to tell you about what Microsoft does with open source. A little surprising for a lot of people in here, but we're going to update you on open source, open data, and open government, and we've got a few surprises for you. So first things first, we know. No, we really do. Microsoft doesn't have the best history with open source, right? Something like 12 years ago, some bad things were said, and we've made some poor business decisions. And we've been apologizing for it for the past 12 years. But the reality is, this is a new Microsoft. This is not your dad's Microsoft. And I'm not the one who said that. Over the past couple of years, you've probably seen a lot of what's been happening at Microsoft with regards to open source. In fact, you've probably even seen Satya Nadella, our new CEO, tell the world that Microsoft loves Linux. Microsoft loves Linux. And I can tell you this is not marketing. It's not marketing because last year when he first got his job, he pulled all of his senior leadership into a room in Redmond. And when we were there, he came up to us and he said, there is no reason Microsoft cannot be the most open software company in the world. Now, this was not external. This is confidential. This is something he told his own team. And therefore, you've seen how much of that we've been showing in the past year. But that didn't just happen overnight. We've been involved with open source for well over 10 years, for 12 actually, and we've done quite a few things. You probably don't know that Microsoft contributes a lot to PHP. In fact, one of the top five contributors to PHP, Pierre Joie, a good friend of mine, is a Microsoft employee. You probably don't know that the president of the Apache Foundation and the vice president of Apache Foundation is also a Microsoft employee. And you probably don't know that Microsoft is one of the biggest contributors to the Linux kernel. But all of that is just tech. No need to talk about it. The most important thing from our perspective is that a couple years ago, we opened a company called Microsoft Open Technologies, an entire subsidiary focused solely on open source, embracing open source technologies and their communities, and how we can integrate that into Microsoft itself. Now, the cool part about that is that this year, we actually integrated Microsoft Open Technologies into our engineering, because we believe that open source is essential and critical to Microsoft technology. And so now it's a part of our cloud technology. So let's talk about our cloud then. Our cloud is truly, truly open. Any data, any application, any framework, any platform. And it is one of the hyperscale clouds of the world. Some say it's one of the most open. And I believe it's one of the most open clouds in the world. And let me explain. Open, you expect to have open source. You expect to have open standards. But the one thing about Azure that we think about first is that Linux must work just as well as Windows in our cloud. We made Windows. And Linux must work just as well as Windows in our cloud. That's got to tell you something of our focus on Azure. So, Let's talk about how much of our cloud is Linux. 25% of Microsoft Azure is currently running Linux. So one in every four VMs are Linux. That's pr pretty decent, and that number is only going to go up, significantly up. So what is our approach to an open cloud? Like you, we believe the same thing for cloud. It's all about empowering our customers, right? Make sure people have the freedom to choose, the freedom to change, the freedom to leave. Give them the value they expect, but also empowering local IT communities and economies. We want to enable choice by giving cross-platform, interoperability, open standards, and really engaging the open source ecosystem. But finally, it's providing a trusted cloud one that is truly secure, one that is compliant, private, and gives you absolute control. And that is critical when we talk about cloud and government. Control. And as you probably know, Microsoft has made an investment this year to have two data centers in Canada, one in Toronto, 
one in Quebec City. Now, I think most of the people here are technical. You should know that there is no technical reason as to why we need a cloud in Canada. The ones in the U.S. or around the world will work just fine. But we're doing this to support Canadian business and Canadian government, because data sovereignty is absolutely critical. So I can talk all day about how much Microsoft loves open source, and I will be here all day. But the reality is, we also love open source partners. You might be familiar that Microsoft has one of the largest partner networks in the world, over 10,000 worldwide, over 1,200 within Canada. The challenge we face is that most of these partners know Microsoft technologies. And as we are growing our open source ecosystem, we need partners who know open source technologies. And so today, I strongly would love to talk to all of you about what you guys are doing with open source and how we can work together. And I am really excited today to tell you that Savafair Linux is the first open source partner for Microsoft Canada. <laughs> Savafair Linux has been working with us for the past three years to figure out how we can develop a partnership program to support the open source community, and we'll continue learning from them over the next years to come. But ultimately, we believe partnering with the strongest open source leaders in the country with the most open cloud in the country, we're definitely going to make the lives of our customers better.